What's the story of the New Testament? The New Testament records the life of Jesus, his life here on earth, his crucifixion, and his resurrection, and it also records for us the spread of the early Christian church. It explains how Christianity started as a small group of believers in Jerusalem and how it spread to throughout and beyond the Roman Empire. And the New Testament ends looking forward to Jesus' return and his future reign on the earth. And so we hope you'll read the New Testament for yourself, but here's a few points to help you understand the story of the New Testament. So here's the first point. Jesus came to earth to fulfill God's promises. In the Old Testament, God had made a promise to a man named Abraham in Genesis 12. It was a promise that God would save the entire world. And yet, God hadn't finished this part of the promise. He hadn't yet rescued and redeemed the world. And that's what Jesus' coming was all about. You see, Jesus came in fulfillment of the promise to Abraham and many other promises in the Old Testament. Jesus was the fulfillment of what God's people had been looking for, looking for the day when God would rescue his people. And we see that from the very first verse of the New Testament, it's rooted in the fact that Jesus is the fulfillment of God's promise. This is the record of the ancestors of Jesus the Messiah, a descendant of David and of Abraham. The coming of Jesus is the fulfillment of the story of the Old Testament. That's why as Christians it's so important to read the Old Testament because it tells everything that God was doing until the coming of Jesus. And we also get a context for understanding the death of Jesus and his resurrection. Jesus came to rescue the world in fulfillment of God's promises. Well, here's the second part of the story of the New Testament that we need to know. Jesus died and rose again to save people from their sins. Jesus came to this earth to die on the cross for our sins. Now, he did a lot of other stuff on the earth, but the most important thing he did was to die in our place on the cross for our sins so that we could be rescued. The rest of the New Testament spends a lot of time reflecting on this, as does the book of Romans. Therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ, our Lord, has done for us. This verse explains how Jesus' death on a cross connects to our lives. When we believe in him, when we put our faith in him, we receive forgiveness for our sins. That connection with God that we lost in Genesis, that we lost in the Garden of Eden, is restored through Jesus Christ. We're forgiven of our sins and we receive eternal life. So that's a really important part, not just of the New Testament, but of the whole Bible. But let's keep looking and see what else the story of the New Testament is for us. Jesus commissioned his followers to make disciples. Before Jesus returned to heaven to sit at the right hand of the Father, which is where he is right now, Jesus gave us an important command. He saved us, he rescued us, and then he commissioned us, and he sent us out. Let's look at his words to us today. Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. The rest of the New Testament explains how Christians did this, how they went out into the world and they told their friends and strangers even about the good news of Jesus Christ and his salvation for them. It explains how you and I can go out into the world and tell people about Jesus and help people pursue God and live lives that honor God. Through the empowering of God's Holy Spirit, we can together as God's people change the world. The New Testament shows us that certainly God's church isn't perfect. Christians are not perfect by any means. But under the lordship of Jesus Christ, fueled by the power of his spirit, we can transform the world and bring glory to the name of Jesus Christ. Well, let's look at the last final part of the story of the New Testament. The end of history is already written and God wins. After explaining what happened with Christians in the first century and giving us a lot of ideas about how to live lives of faith, of honoring God and helping others, the Bible looks to the future and it tells us how Jesus will return one day. And when he returns, God will deal with sin and death forever. 
He will once for all restore his relationship with his people. And the book of Revelation explains just a little bit about what that looks like. Look, God's home is now among his people. He will live with them and they will be his people. God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. God's future for us is depicted as paradise. For those who believe in Jesus, it says that we'll be connected to God for all eternity, we'll be connected to God's people for all eternity, and we'll live lives of deep meaning and purpose as we worship God. And that is the hope-filled end of the New Testament, the, the future that God is calling us toward. And if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, it's not just some fairy tale future, but that's your future. And so again, I, I hope you'll read the New Testament, you'll get to know Jesus Christ, and get to know God's great plan for you, for history, and for his church.